Hello, I'm Lionel Bolton. I'm head of secondary English, modern languages and humanities here at Oxford University Press. And I'm here to tell you about our brand new resources for primary science, history and geography, produced in collaboration with Art Curriculum Plus, who in turn created and developed the resources with 80 primary schools who've been trialling them. I'm going to take you through a lesson for year six science. And in preparing for this, it proved to me that these resources are genuinely as easy to use as we say they are. Before working in educational publishing, I was a head of English in a secondary school and I taught English for seven years, but I've never taught primary and I've never taught science. So if I can take the resources that we're publishing and deliver a lesson, then I'm totally confident that all primary school teachers will be able to do the same. In terms of planning for this individual lesson, I'd say it took me somewhere between 20 minutes and 25 minutes to prepare for, uh, having familiarised myself with the unit as a whole and the programme as a whole beforehand. For the purposes of this session, I've picked out just a few examples of the key elements of the lesson. It isn't the whole lesson, uh, which would normally take about two hours in total, which of course can be split into small lessons if that's what you need in your school. All of the teaching resources and planning materials are available on Oxford Owl. They're really easy to find. You simply filter by year group and unit name and number. The teaching materials will include curriculum overview documents, planning documents, teaching guides and notes, classroom PowerPoint slides, knowledge organizer for pupils, subject knowledge guides for teachers, digital versions of the pupil workbooks, additional resources, discovery box resources and posters for geography and history, and common misconceptions for science. The front of class PowerPoint slides have teaching notes that appear within the notes, as well as within the unit planning guidance. Uh, and these give you all the information you need in context to help you deliver your lesson. The planning guides enable teachers to see connections between all the lessons as well as prior and future learning. They also have suggestions for how each activity and section of the lesson can be taught and include key pieces of information or misconceptions that teachers should be aware of. As you can see, looking at this slide here, the pupil workbooks are very visually appealing. They include character illustrations, images, icons, colour and lots of activities for the pupils to complete. On the screen you can see here three example pages and between them they highlight some of the main features of the pupil workbooks including pupil activities, knowledge quizzes, key knowledge and key words. The lesson I'm going to take you through is on light and here you'll see that there's some text explaining what a light source is. This is then followed by pupil activities. And on the third example page on the right, you'll see uh, an example of a knowledge quiz. This uh, helps to test what the children have already learned. And these appear in every lesson, apart from the first lesson in the unit, uh, because the uh, knowledge quizzes test knowledge from the previous lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how the main components work together, focusing primarily on the front of class teaching slides and the corresponding workbook pages. You'll see that some of the activities that you'll be asking the uh, children to do are on the front of class PowerPoints, but are not in the workbook. For example, if they are a taught task or a learning review. So the workbook is the main source of documented evidence of what the pupil has done but it's not the entirety of what they do in their lesson. So on this slide, we've listed the key points that we're going to focus on during this session, picking out the main elements that would appear in any given lesson. So firstly, I'll show you how uh, we activate prior knowledge in this instance, seeing what pupils already know about light. Then we move to outlining the knowledge that they're going to learn from this particular lesson. Uh, we'll look at a source text that appears within the workbook. 
we'll look at a specific workbook activity, followed by a specific talk activity, an example of a second workbook activity. Then we'll move to looking at a practical science um, activity. Then we'll look at an example case study and how that can be used flexibly. And then we'll move towards completing a learning review and finally an exit question. And that will give you a flavour of all of the key elements that appear within any given lesson. And all of this is delivered through uh, the Oxford Hour Front of Class teaching PowerPoint slides and the relevant corresponding pupil workbook pages. Here we move into the uh, real slides that you will find on Oxford Hour for uh, year six science. This particular unit and lesson looking at light. So we begin by looking at uh, prior knowledge. This is the moment where you might have a discussion, a uh, whole class, uh, where you're going to establish what children know already from um, previous learning. And because this is year six, uh, the pupils will have done uh, work on light and shadows previously, uh, and therefore they should be able to answer uh, all three of these questions. Beneath these actual slides, which you won't be able to see uh, in this presentation, there are the teaching notes that are duplicated from the unit planning guidance so that you've got all the information in one place at the same point so you can refer to them as and when you need them. Here we have uh, the key knowledge slide. Now, here you've got two boxes, key knowledge and keywords. These are duplicated from the corresponding workbook pages. They're really useful to have on the slide because they act as a focal point for the pupils uh, looking front of class whilst that discussion is taking place. So you will be saying things like, here is the key knowledge that we're going to learn in the lesson. Here are the key words that we're going to know by the end of this lesson and so forth whilst this slide is front of class uh, and the pupils have the workbooks in front of them simultaneously. You could perhaps select pupils to read the key knowledge to the class, or alternatively, the pupils could read it in pairs, um, for instance, maybe using my turn, your turn, uh, to familiarise themselves with the key um, knowledge and the key words. The key knowledge and vocabulary enables teachers and pupils to know exactly what the learning focuses on. This means that teachers will feel confident as they'll know what points to emphasise and even what to omit if they have to. Moving on to the next slide, we see what is a light source? And this again is uh, a repeated um, text from the People Workbook to act as a focal point front of class. It's a reading activity where we look more in depth at what the light source is. Uh, and this forms the basis of what the pupils are going to learn about in the lesson as a whole. A nice idea would be to read this aloud or ask one of the pupils to do so. You can see here that the key words, light source, luminous, long, non-luminous, are all emboldened. And that links back to the key words that we saw uh, previously. So it's constantly reinforcing key words, key scientific vocabulary. And that's a real feature of the support. Uh, to the teacher, also in the notes and in the planning guidance. It's not just about ensuring um, that you have the scientific knowledge to be able to do the lesson, but to encourage you as a teacher to model and use scientific vocabulary so that the pupils themselves will then use the correct scientific vocabulary when it's needed. I mean, the examples given here are all scientific terminology that you will be wanting to encourage your pupils to use themselves. And this in turn is part of the explanation as to why this is mastery. Trying to use vocabulary accurately, mastering those particular words. This is also duplicated from the pupil workbook, only in this instance uh, you will be expecting the pupils to complete this actually in their workbook. So once you're happy they've understood what a light source is, it's then their turn to have a go at this specific activity uh, where you'd be asking them to tick which of the images is a light source. So once they've completed that, you can then, if you wish, show them the answers, which is the next slide in the teaching sequence that you'll find on Oxford Out. Here is an example of a talk task. 
So here you would discuss the task with your pupils, either whole class or in pairs, however it is that you choose to do that best. Here on this next slide, which is also a duplication of an activity within the pupil workbook, it's an opportunity for the pupils to turn to their workbooks again and jot down maybe on their own or in pairs, however you choose to do so, more examples of light sources that you haven't talked about so far. And if, you, if I move on to the next slide, you'll see that in each instance where there is the opportunity for answers, we provide example answers within the slides within the teaching sequence. So you can share those front of class if you if you wished. Now, following this within the pupil workbook and within the teaching slides, there are more activities to complete within the lesson, uh, but I'm going to move on uh, to take you to a, an example of another key element of the lesson. Here's an example of a practical science investigation that you can carry out with your pupils. You will obviously have prepared for this beforehand, collecting a box of equipment, in this sense involving torches, maybe DVDs, paper, card, cardboard tube, a toy car, a teddy bear, plasticine and so forth. Because you're going to be asking your pupils to undertake a practical scientific investigation and you're going to be asking them to try to demonstrate that light travels in straight lines. So they might take any one of these or a combination of these various items that you've uh, provided them with in order to, for them to work out how they can demonstrate that light travels in straight lines. So if I skip to the next slide, we can see that we've produced a slide here that again you can share uh, front of class with your pupils to show one possible investigation route that they might have taken. In this instance, they, uh, the illustration here shows taking a torch with a DVD to demonstrate light travelling in straight lines. Your pupils will have spent some time thinking about how they're going to approach the investigation. They'll have spent a bit of time constructing their investigation. And then finally, in their pupil workbook, they'll have written up the choices they made and what they learnt from it. And here on this slide, it shows the relevant page from the pupil workbook where the pupils will then answer this question. How did you use the apparatus you chose to test whether light travels in straight lines? So this they will be completing um, in their people workbook, which can then be evidenced uh, for you to look at um, later on. Here is an example uh, scientific case study. And you can use this in a number of ways. You could Use it in the lesson, time permitting, perhaps whole class or in pairs, discussing uh, the people on the slide and answering the question and discussing. Alternatively, it could be said as a homework, as a research task, with the pupils going away to find out more about the three scientists and answering that specific question there. And that provides an interesting additional task as it stretches pupils' learning, it makes it broader and richer. And as you can see, it means that it works flexibly within the time uh, and how best you would like to set this particular case study. We're now approaching the end of the lesson. If this was one lesson, as I say, and there was two hours available, that's we're approaching the end of that. Alternatively, you might have split this out over a number of shorter lessons. Either way, whether it was one lesson or, or multiple lessons, here we're going to ascertain what your pupils have, have learned. And this is where your pupils could perhaps work in pairs or talk to, you know, talk to a partner. Um, you, you can work, make this work flexibly if you need to. They'd be answering this question on the screen to identify what uh, key learning helps them to answer that question. And finally, we move to the exit question. And there are a number of these, they're multiple choice questions and they help you and your pupils check their learning. And this can be used for you to provide a secure understanding of what your pupils have retained as they move through the unit. And that's the end of the session, it's the end of the lesson. As I say, I've selected certain items from the lesson to give you a flavour of how the lesson works as a whole. If you'd like to see more, if you'd like to find out more about all of our science, history and geography 
uh, publishing, please visit our website.